No more lies. Arson is illegal and I denounce it unequivocally. How did that feel? How did it feel? How did it feel? Welcome to Mystery Files, where we take a deep dive into cases that span from the creepy to the truly bizarre and everything in between. I'm Ryan, and today I'll be forcing my colleague Shane to hear all about the alarming House on Fire tapes. And in the end, you'll have to decide if the mystery is solved or if it's simply a mystery. seen about this? You heard about this? I gonna, have never heard of this. No. Start with Jay Leno every time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How's the fire? You hear about this? You seen about this? Yeah. How's the fire? No. Uh, uh, going on my context clues. Yeah, you could gather a couple key things. Let's actually test that investigator mind right at the top here. House. Yeah. Fire. Tapes. So there's a house that's on fire. There are tapes. You have aced that test. I'm very proud Is of you. Is it just tapes of a house burning and people being like, ah! No, no. Okay, I don't want to hear that. I don't enjoy that sort of thing. You're not here to sh show me snuff films in the basement, no, no, are no. you? No, I'm here to show you something special for my own collection. Okay. Oh, another one of your stag films? That's right. Hey, why don't we go ahead and pop it in? This is what it looks like when you're free from online threats, censorship, and surveillance, thanks to today's sponsor, NordVPN. Sign up for an account via nordvpn.com slash watcher and do the following with me. Browse the web in public, knowing your online traffic is protected with robust encryption and a hidden, dedicated IP address. The threat protection feature can scan files as they're being downloaded from malware and warn you about dangerous websites where such files are usually found. I think this one's okay, don't you? Try NordVPN products such as NordPass to manage all your passwords, NordLocker to back up and sync files in a protected cloud storage app, and utilize other features of NordVPN such as Data Breach Scanner, which informs you if any sensitive information is exposed. NordVPN is the fastest and most reliable VPN on the planet and includes 24-7 customer service support. Try it risk-free now with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.com slash watcher and get this exclusive NordVPN deal for a two-year plan plus four additional months. Now, back to the show. Sorry. This one's for you, Vinny. As Alfonso Lua's car overheated on the blistering summer day of August 15, 1989, he pulled off of Interstate 205 near Stockton, California. Alfonso and his son Hector examined the car, but had no luck fixing it. As they trekked down the road to find a house with a phone, Alfonso and Hector spotted a camo jacket. Crudely sewn on was a military-style patch of a key crisscrossing a torch and a lightning bolt. While examining the jacket, they found multiple cassettes of heavy metal music and an unlabeled videotape. Before moving on, they took the videotape with them. When they arrived home, Alfonso and Hector inserted the VHS into their VCR. Nothing could have prepared them for the disturbing images they would see when they pressed play. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay. Look at the fire. This is my domain, my hell. Look at it, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been doing on a week's vacation. <laughs> look at the flames. <laughs> Listen to the coyotes yell. Take a good look at that. And you tell me. Come on. Get out of that fire. I gotta go now. But remember me. Pretty good. So this guy obviously sounds pretty gleeful when he's setting fire to this house. And I, curious about the psyche of this man, want to get a taste of that euphoria that he's feeling. So maybe we should go outside and 
test it for ourselves. Here we are. You yep. see a little model. It's really nice. Cul-de-sac here. Yeah. And I'm glad to replicate the euphoria of setting fire to a building so I could understand why that guy was talking that way. Hold on, it's a little windy out here. Okay. I might need that torch. Oh, oh wait, Shane got it. How did that feel? How did it feel? How did it feel? Pretty irresponsible. Oh. This is not good firemanship, you know. The but house there it goes. The house is on fire. Oh, that's too big. Should we? Should we probably? Put yeah, you that should out? put it out. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I consider this a smashing success. So, uh, what'd you think, right? It was really fun to use a fire extinguisher. I've never actually done that. Anyways, let's move on. Believing that the demented voice on the tape had set the fire, the Luas turned the video over to the authorities. George Well, San Joaquin County arson investigator, said that when he first saw the tape, quote, I immediately thought that we were dealing with somebody that was disturbed, end quote. No shit. Yes. Yeah, that person is not in their right mind. I don't know. I think, I think we're dealing with a, just a funny guy. He sounds too I can play the tape again. Can we do it one more time? All right. You want to hear it again? Yeah. Look at that. Look at the fire. This is my domain. That's... Yeah, let's invite that guy over to Thanksgiving dinner. That sounds great. This is my domain, my hell. Past the gravy. It's very theatrical, you know? I think the fact that you think that says a lot. The captain of the California Department of Forestry, Frank Curry, was haunted by the video. He said, quote, I've never run across anything as eerie as this tape. It frightened me. As a matter of fact, I thought about it that night when I went to bed. End quote. All right, dude. <laughs> look at this guy. Look how scared he looks. <gasps> were they able to, well, maybe we'll get into this. Were they able to identify where the burn took place? Like where this actually happened? Well, the, vi the video was filmed. I mean, yeah, that's kind of, what the, the mystery We're getting is, into that? The, the, it's mystery files. Of the mystery. I thought the mystery was, who is this? I wasn't sure if the mystery two -pronged, was. Two-pronged, perhaps. So we got a two-pronged mystery. That's right. Oh, boy. <laughs> What'd you say? Nothing. Curry watched the tape hundreds of times as they attempted to determine the location of the fire. Few new details emerged on the tape. The arsonist claimed that the year was 1988. Commercials on the tape seemed to verify this. Fire engines came onto the scene, so they knew the fire had been reported. But from where? Well, so it's a long tape. We just saw a little bit of it? Saw a little bit. I mean, we saw the, the abridged. We didn't see the director's cut. The low quality of the video made it impossible to determine which fire department arrived on the scene. When a county arson investigator went back to where the tape was found, they were shocked to find the camo jacket exactly where it had been left. As they examined the jacket for evidence, they discovered a wooden pestle and a ceramic skull. Cool. Complicating their search, Highway 205 is near several major highways. It was possible this tape wasn't from Stockton or even California. It could have been from anywhere in the country. Just because like it was found in Stockton, California, doesn't mean it was actually in Stockton, California. This is on a highway, so it could be, you know, someone from Louisiana or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's up there by the bay, huh? Yeah. Mm. That's the bay. Okay, seems like a nice part of the state. It's where the Zodiac killed a bunch of people. When it became obvious that the fire on the tape was not one he had investigated, George Wells distributed the video statewide. It made its way to Woodside Fire Captain John Dellinges in San Mateo County. Dellinges was part of a task force investigating a series of arsons about 80 miles west of Stockton in Redwood City, California. Mm. Redwood City had once been a small farming town, but in 1987, that was changing. Seemingly overnight, a series of large affluent homes were built throughout town. Resentment exploded. 11 fires were set to homes that were under construction. Seven of them burnt to the ground. Nobody was hurt, but there were millions of dollars in damages. In some of the homes, graffiti littered the wall with the words, Please, no more houses. And neighbors revolt. You, you get that? It was like the Riddler. No more lies. No more lies. 
Woodside Fire Captain John Dellinges believed whoever was setting the fires was just getting started. He explained, quote, experienced arsonists, number one, they don't leave clues. And there were a lot of things left at the scene that indicated to us that juveniles were involved, end quote. Paranoia set in, neighbor was accusing neighbor. Got ourselves a little bit of a witch trial brewing here. Yeah, you're really selling this person to me. If this person's just going around burning down McMansions? You're nobody's a, living there? It's just these big, ugly houses? You're a demented man, you know that? I mean, nobody's getting hurt except for... What year were you born? Developers, uh, 86. I could see it. I, I could see it, too. If I were around that area in this time, I yeah. might be doing this. All right. Kind of incriminating thing to say on camera, but... Now, I want to be clear. I don't support art. Arson is illegal. That's an illegal thing to do, to set fire to a place. I'm just saying, this has already happened, and I think it's funny that he burned down a bunch of McMansions. Why'd you deliver that like there was someone holding a gun on you, Alf Cam? I'm just saying, there's Nobody nothing, should commit arson. There's nothing we can no do about it. No one should do that. This has already happened, and unfortunately, I applaud this person. Look, man, just admit you're a sicko. You got a poster of this guy on your wall. Arson, you're like, arson I love is, this guy. Arson is illegal, and I denounce it. Unequivocally, unilaterally, Why are you crossing I applaud your fingers? this person. I applaud this person. <laughs> well, glad we delivered that very confusing uh, PSA. <laughs> Let's proceed forward. A task force of state and local officials was formed to put an end to the fires, but they raged on. In 1988, four more homes were burnt to the ground. One home was set ablaze with people inside. Can't be doing that. Oh, now, now this is where you I, hop off the train. That's where I hop off the train if it's the same person, but also maybe they just made a mistake. Yeah. Just look at the horror of this inferno through this window. I don't know fires if this start is. fast. Fire, I've watched a lot of videos of fires starting. Yeah. In it would blow your mind, man. I saw backdraft when I was a little kid and I realized I was never cut out to be a fireman. Yeah, but it, it gets, it's scary stuff. It looks pretty hot, though it is kind of cool to have the big suit on. I went to a fire, like, you know, like a fire department once, and I put, it, like... It, when you're a kid, and they're yeah, like, and you got to like, put all this on. And, and like, you're like, imagine what? walking upstairs in this. And I'm and, like, and and no thanks, surrounded I'm going to make YouTube videos. Surrounded by fire. The smell of smoke woke them up in time to make it out alive. Dylan just confessed, quote, we kept up the patrols and the nighttime surveillance work, but we were still unable to find anybody that was responsible for setting these fires, end quote. By 1990, they had no leads. The task force dwindled to only a handful of people. The embers went out. The case went cold. Until the Stockton arsonist tape came into John Dellinger's hands. Realizing he had recorded all the fires for investigation and training purposes, Dellinger set up two TVs side by side and reviewed each tape he had against the arsonist's video, the house on fire tape. Eventually, he came across one that fit. Here's a screenshot of that side by side. He's like Morgan Freeman setting up all the TVs in Batman. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna talk about Batman this entire episode. Everything burns. I think this guy fancies himself to be somewhat of a Batman. A Robin Hood complex, if you will. Burning only rich houses. Yeah. The date of the fire was August 15th, 1988. Exactly a year before the tape had been found. By comparing a lamppost, power pole, and trailer, they verified that this was the fire from the video. When they returned to investigate the scene of the crime, Dellinger's discovered something that sent chills up his spine. You ready for this? Ice? You've been warned. It's, it's, you got one. You get one for the, the opposite of fire, but sent chills yeah, up yeah, his spine. Yeah, I know. He's, I was trying to set up a reveal because he discovered something that was like, damn, that's creepy. You ready for it? Because It's creepy, man. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Get this. Okay. To get his vantage point, the arsonist must have shot his video from the bushes, nearly 50 feet behind where Dellinger's was taking his own footage. He recalled, quote, to have somebody who was setting fires and hiding up in the bushes behind me filming the same fire that I'm filming, I've never, ever had this happen to me before, end quote. <laughs> well, no shit, that would be weird if that had happened to you multiple times. I don't know why. Uh, that hasn't happened to most people. Yeah, but the idea that this person is so confident in their ability to set this fire and remain undetected, they're literally squatted behind them 50 yards back, just well, taking footage. Honestly, it's a 
you know, people are going to be preoccupied trying to put the fire out. Fires are loud. They demand attention. If there's ever a time where you're probably okay to hide out and just enjoy your work, yeah, that's probably it. I don't agree with that logic. That would be like if you murdered that's somebody. That's why you're not an arsonist, brother. Well, yeah, what a shame. Apparently you are. No, but I could be if I wanted to. You're making me wonder. Clearly it worked. Clearly it was a great time to well, film here, the fire. Here is also, like, I'm going to break out a Human Emotions 101 for you because I do think this is something you struggle with. When somebody does something bad, yeah. the idea is like, oh, crap, I did something bad, I might get caught. Yeah, but or, this is a sicko. But the idea that they're so bold that they're going to sit there, despite the possibility of getting caught, yeah. is still insane to me. Have you ever ding dong ditched someone? Yes. That scans. <laughs> you I, never have? No! I haven't, because I was a good boy. I think it's funny. No, I mean, I don't now. I did as a child. But did you run away, or did you sit there and watch? We ran away to a spot where we could watch them. That's the whole point. Now I'm understanding your psyche. Yeah. If, I, if I ding-dong ditch somebody, I would run away and just keep running. The whole point of ding-dong ditching, you're not like, ding-dong, and then you run away <laughs> and go, I wonder if anyone ever answered the door. No, That's you're true. you're supposed to go hide in a bush and be like... <laughs> That is true. That is true. You know? It's a harmless prank. Maybe I just don't have the mind of a sicko. Now, to be clear, I never did that ding-dong ditch thing where you put a flaming bag of poo-poo on the doorstep. That does make me feel like you have done that, though. No, I've just seen Billy Madison. Dylan just called a meeting of the task force. It was time to get to the bottom of this. Which, you know what time it is. It's corkboard time. Let's get into those theories. All right. Let's get to the bottom of who the hell started that fire. Theory one, an upset neighbor. Oh. Any reactions to an upset neighbor just off the top? That scans, neighbors right, get yeah, upset. Yeah. Within some of the burned down houses, phrases like, no new houses were spray painted onto the walls. This led authorities to believe that a resident upset by the new construction was behind the arson. In the late 80s and early 90s, Redwood City's per capita income was $20,292. Nearly 10% of the town lived below the poverty line. But with the tech boom happening in nearby Silicon Valley, urban sprawl crept into their rural town. These new homes were upwards of 6,000 square feet, costing over $700,000 in 1989. Burning these homes to the ground resulted in millions of dollars in losses. The residents of Redwood City began turning on each other. Dellinger said, quote, everybody was suspicious of everybody, and everybody was saying, I think my neighbor might be doing this, yeah. end quote. You, what is this goofy smile? I think it's fine, I love it. <laughs> I mean, they're all- He's an anarchist. <laughs> uh, well, I just, you know, you're gonna move into a town and build a bunch of big, ugly houses. That's true, I don't- Also, like, like Silicon Valley, what, well, we're rooting for them? No. Burn all their houses down. I just don't want to root for people to have their homes burned down, you know? That's just me. I agree to some extent. Okay. While many believe the construction was the motive, some believed it was an inside job. Which brings us to the second theory. Theory two a disgruntled construction worker. Oh. Ooh. On the video, one name is repeated multiple times. Omar. You Omar got it. You nailed it. You Omar coming. Had that, 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 my hands are a little sweaty from the, this. Jesus. Well, I'm, hold, I'm gripping this. Yeah, you really are. I'm really gripping it. Officers knew finding Omar was the key to this investigation. But who was he? Captain Curry theorized who's our favorite captain because he has such a fun name. Wait, have we met him? He's the guy who was frightened, Terrified. couldn't go to sleep after couldn't watching sleep it 100 night. times. Couldn't kiss his wife. <laughs> captain Curry theorized, quote, is Omar the construction person that maybe hired this person and fired him and made that a revenge motive for the fire, end quote. With the police knowing that the arsonist had slipped through their fingers as he filmed from behind them, this would explain how the arsonist was able to do so and easily avoid capture. He knew the ins and outs of the location due to working on the buildings. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Whether he was an accomplice or a victim, the police knew they needed to find Omar. They had a dangerous individual on their hands, but they feared that even darker forces could be at play. Theory three, Satan worshipers. Ooh. But before we get into that theory, why don't we jog our memories with this? 
look at the fire. This is my domain. My hell. Look at it, Omar. <laughs> this is what I've been doing like a week's vacation. Look at the flames. Listen to the coyotes yell. Yeah. Take a good look at that. And you tell me that I cannot set fires. I gotta go now. <laughs> but remember me. That part's the va my favorite part. You don't think this is an incredibly funny Oh, I think person? it's super funny. Okay. Especially that last part. I gotta go now. I gotta go now. <laughs> I gotta go now. My mom's calling me. From the first moment they watched the tape, people feared they could be dealing with a Satan worshiper. This spark of an idea was fanned when they uncovered the camo jacket with a ceramic skull and pestle found nearby. The patch on the jacket matched no known military emblem, but was contained inside a burnt orange pentagram. Investigators claimed the kind of pestle discovered was used to grind herbs said to be used in occult ceremonies. Could the fires be some kind of ritual? An attempted sacrifice to Satan? They needed to put an end to this reign of terror before this person's crimes escalated to violence, which is often the case with arsony. Does that happen? Yes. Well, didn't know that. So now that we've kind of laid out the lay of the land here, what are you feeling? Upset neighbor? Disgruntled construction worker, or we have over here Satan worshippers. I think maybe a combo of one and two. That would, what's about Omar though? Did they? Would they never found Omar? Well, I'm going to ask you about this first, and then we'll maybe we'll talk about it. Omar. <clears throat> I would guess two with one being a close second. I would say if the police were any good at their jobs, they would be able to probably look at the staff or crew that was working on that find out if there was an employee named Omar. Yeah. And especially if Omar took a week's vacation. Yeah. Pretty pretty easy to figure that out. You would think that, and that's good process on your part. So yeah. you, just to be clear, you're saying two and then one with a close second? I would one? say probably two because Omar does sound like maybe a, referring to taking a week off, that makes it sound like they're co-workers. I've seen you've been scribbling away there. Anything of note? Something I wrote, 1989, notes. Alfonso, son is Hector, yeah. found funny tape, guy doing funny bit, Joker-fied stuff, 100%. Video is of house on fire, burning down McMansions, nice. Omar, Redwood City, tech boom. I'm sure you could make sense of all that. Well, let's see how close you were with your guess. With a depleted task force and no solid leads, they reached out to the public. Somebody out there knew Omar. If they could find Omar, they could find the arsonist. So they turned to Unsolved Mysteries. The legendary television program hosted by Robert Stack aired the story on September 19th, 1990, bringing worldwide attention to the case. You've seen the show, obviously. Robert Stack. That's yep. right. Minutes after the episode ended, the phone started to ring off the hook. They received 1,800 phone calls from Canada, Australia, and throughout the US. One of those callers was Doris Lance of Redwood City. Across the street from her lived a 17-year-old boy that she believed would be of interest to them. His name was Omar. Omar. Investigators approached the teenager, who initially claimed to not know anything about the fires. But when he was brought into the police station for questioning, that story changed. The teenager claimed to have seen the tape for the first time on Unsolved Mysteries like everybody else. But when he saw it, he knew he was the Omar the video was seemingly made for. That's exciting. All right, we're getting somewhere now. I like we're, it. This case. I'm excited to know what this person is like. Would you say this case is picking up heat? Yeah, well, yeah. Steam, heat, sure, sure, sure heat. Yeah, getting hotter. Less of a cold case by the minute. You it's know? a hot case. It's a hot case. I can't even touch it. Ow, the case ah, is hot. Don't touch that case. Put that case in the oven. Yeah. Omar knew that he was the Omar mentioned in the video. But who was behind the tape? Who's the person speaking? Omar claimed it was his 19-year-old friend, John. John. While they had John's house under surveillance, John's garage caught fire. As fire captain, this gave Dellinges the opportunity to investigate what they found disturbed them. Mutilated animal parts uh -oh. would appear to be sacrifices. 
a cutting table, Ugh. and large knives covered in blood. Ugh. Scrapbooks of newspaper clippings about the arsons. Ugh. Multiple videotapes, some with news coverage on the fire. Sure. Others with short films which were focused on satanic messages. Yeah. So just a little recap. You whiffed it, buddy. You whiffed it. It was number three. It was one of the two that you did say. Yeah. Do you, are you still a fan of this guy? I mean, outside of the animal stuff, yeah. You're you're down with the satanic messages and the. I mean, who? I don't give a shit if someone worships Satan. Uh, like what, that doesn't make them a bad person. What about them putting up a shrine of themselves about the? I mean, they're proud of the work they've done. I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess be proud of your work. I yeah. mean, I could probably do a better job at that. The animal parts look bad. Of course, don't harm animals. You could of course see how this is just one stepping stone along a road that's going to lead someplace much worse than well, this. I guess, yeah. Also really funny that the only reason they were able to go and search his house was because his own house caught on fire. Not great. Pretty funny. Not great at what Don't he's Don't even doing. need a warrant. Yeah. Your house is on fire. Yeah. All right, let's move forward here. On September 27th, 1990, John was brought to the police station. Between tears, <laughs> he cried. <laughs> I always get amused by criminals that cry when they're like, realizing what they have done. Yeah. It brings me great joy. Sure. You know, I, I think all, be, all criminals should be brought to justice. Indeed. You know, I, their, their emotions, you know, that's, that's between them and God. I'm a fan of justice. Yes. I'm glad he cried. Vigilante. That's right. You're out there in the streets. People I'm don't know this. He's out there in the streets. I am out. You're not supposed to. He's out there in the streets. You've probably met Brian Bergara before. Anytime you feel a chill in the night, that's him. We were under agreement that that would remain private. He watches you from the shadows. Between tears, he gave his confession. Not only did he set the fire on the tape, but 14 others. He was linked to the destruction of 11 additional structures and 15 grass fires between 1987 and 1988. Real firebug. I'm responsible for some grass fires myself. <laughs> <laughs> Smoking weed. Yeah. <clears throat> The damage, <laughs> the damage he caused totaled more than $2 million. When asked about the case, a police spokesman said, quote, there's no motive. We don't know if there are other suspects involved or not, end quote. Despite his confession, he pleaded guilty to only a single count. In February 1991, Omar was also found guilty on one count of arson in connection with a January 1989 house fire in Redwood City. Notably, the house was located close to the one that was on the tape. The rest of the fires technically remain a mystery to this day, recalling that the son of Sam had escalated from lighting 2,000 fires to murdering six people, the authorities were worried that they were headed down a similar path. That guy was a, he was an arsonist? Yeah. 2,000 fires? Yeah. That's a, that's a Well, you gotta think about it. If a numbers, fire gives man. you some sort of like weird perverse joy, yeah. then eventually that's gonna run out yeah. And you're like, all right, what's going to light my candle now? Right. Oh, Jesus, dude. You know? So this is what what the, you said, it sounded really creepy. This is why, I mean, these people are creeps. Yeah. Well, Apparently, you're a hero. Uh, I didn't say it was my hero. In so many words. Deciding to focus on rehabilitation instead of retribution, Omar served time in juvenile hall, while John was committed to a state mental hospital. What did Omar do? You need a pal. I to guess. do weird things. Yeah, I mean, I you so. and I should know that better than anyone else. You need a pal to do weird things. Due to them being minors at the time of the crimes, the case file is sealed to this day. Well, so it appears we've, we've cracked this one, baby. Just a couple of kids having fun, lighting McMansions on fire. Well, not quite having fun. Like, you know, they yeah. accidentally did a, a floop, sir, when they uh, yeah. maybe lit one on fire that some people were in. Don't do that. Don't go lighting anything on fire, okay? Well, you know, it's, Don't I, mutilate animals. I was just about to say, people having some fun, doing millions of dollars of property damage, a bucket list for Shane, essentially. You know what you light on fire? An Apple store. Can I say that? I don't think you could say that, but I can say that you shouldn't say that, so that way we could keep it in. That's the kind of thing that I would say if I were irresponsible, and I don't suggest you do that. Don't, don't, don't light an Apple store on fire. Uh, just digging deeper and deeper. That's you with the shovel right here. Just whoop. I said not to. <laughs> but then you said to. No, I said not to. I don't. can clip it. 
I could clip it. Don't do it. How the jacket with the tape ended up near Stockton is still unknown. However, if it weren't for this tape and a busted radiator, John may have never been found, allowing him to follow the deadly path other arsonists blazed before him. Instead, he was found before he could harm another human being, and we could officially consider this mystery solved. My biggest critique here, after hearing all this, yeah. get a better name. The House on Fire tapes? It's pretty good. It's not. I mean, I think it's pretty good. I was intrigued by this case name just by House the case name. House on Fire tapes. I, I, thought, I feel The like Hellfire tapes, you know? Something like that's that. Actually, no, that, that actually is pretty good. This is my hell. Hey, look, I'm not titling these, okay? It's also confusing because he's a Satan guy, but he's like, this is my hell. You should be loving it. Maybe well, it was a positive thing. Well, I was, yeah, the way he said it. This he is wasn't, my hell. He wasn't saying like, oh, Kick this ass. is my hell. He was saying it like, oh, this is my hell. Yeah. Um, All right, well, I we, guess we, it's solved. Another solved case. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're solving them like hotcakes. We're not solving them personally, but we're relaying the info from people who solved them. So yes. therefore, we're kind of like solving yeah. them. We're doing God's work. We are. One last good Batman reference to close it out. Ryan, take it away. Well, what, I don't have one say? off what the- What does he say? What, what does Batman, Batman say? <sighs> well, it can't go not everything. <sighs> not yet. <sighs> this he's town he's just proved to you that it's full of people <sighs> willing to believe in good. Some men just want- Oh, that's good. Some men just want to watch the world burn. I was in Burma. <laughs> He's good. He does good cane. I was in Burma. All right. See you next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, let's get out of here. <laughs> Who would have thought that we would have scale model work on Mystery Files? Eat your heart out, James Cameron. Oh, was that like an exact replica of the houses that were burning? In the well, no, of course not. But it looked like a house. <laughs> <laughs>